Hello. I can't believe it's four months since I posted a video. Um, I've been perfectly okay and uh, working as normal. So I don't know quite uh, how it's happened that uh, I've achieved absolutely nothing in the last four months. But so it seems. Um, this video is part six of the Worm Servo uh, saga. The uh, servo that I've been developing to drive the rudder on our robot boat and uh, I think it'll be the last part uh, which finishes off this project there is no machining in this video so if you're only interested in uh, lathes and milling machines um, you can stop watching now well this has turned out quite well for something that wasn't really planned um, I'm going to fix this in here like that and with great difficulty I've made four holes that will screw into virtually the only places in here that, that I <laughs> are free to screw into. Um, and I'm fixing it to the lid because it provides more all-round access to this when it's stuck in there. Um, what I'm planning to do is uh, use this um, CT1 hybrid polymer um, sealant. I used to use GSL Marine, but they stopped making it. But um, this thing is uh, similar stuff, I think. It says it can be applied on wet surfaces, even underwater. Unique adhesion on virtually any material. Successfully bonds all metals, glass mirrors, all woods, polystyrene, fiberglass, tiles, concrete, most stones, most synthetic materials, plastics, including excluding polypropylene. Excuse me, I think this is polypropylene. Phew, we're all right. This box is polycarbonate, not polypropylene. So it says most synthetic materials, plastics, excluding polypropylene. I'm going to spread this properly. I'm doing it like this because the uh, the nozzle was uh, blocked. It probably isn't a wise thing to do, is it? But whoever said I was wise? So. Now, oh, we've degreased all this, of course. We're going to apply this like this. And then we're going to put these screws in before anything else happens. which are the wrong length, by the way, but they're the only ones I've got. I've ordered some longer ones. I think um, the fact that they're countersunk like this makes a pretty good watertight seal anyway between, you know, between the underside of the screw and the countersunk plastic. So now I'm going to tighten these up bit by bit. I just want to not have this enormously blocking things up. I think that'll be okay. And I've just got to leave that to um, that's the end of that. That goes in like that and I've got to put some arrow light on top of it. Right, so, there we are, sitting quietly, and hopefully the motor still works. Yes, sounds nicer without being on the echo chamber. Okay, so that's alright. 
this thing, you know, is, is, it's only just fitted in. It's, it's a miracle, really, that it has, because I didn't exactly design it on uh, um, a CAD system and work out all the tolerances, but this thing is just fitted in here, in this space here. The motor just fits in here. The electronics will just fit in this space above here. And I think I'm going to have a cable gland coming into the side of the box about here, which will be okay. Come around. Oh, I don't know how the cable's going to get around the corner here. Um, that is for another day. What we're going to do here, we're just going to let that set now for 24 hours or more. And hope for the best. Well, rather than using a cable gland, uh, I'm using some of this uh, hybrid polymer sealant, um, which I've used before, and I think it's uh, quite effective, so long as you don't uh, wiggle the cable afterwards um, and make it loose. Um, this takes up less space than the cable gland and um, in my view is more effective because uh, however tightly you do up the uh, the back end of a cable gland uh, over time the cable tends to accommodate itself to the constriction and uh, then you start getting leakages well I've just arrow lighted those uh, wires down there in a position where I think they will clear the servo mechanism, hopefully. Well, I made a, a simple uh, PCB um, for this servo controller um, using JLC PCB, um, but when it came back I realised that most of the through holes were um, too small because of a confusion between metric and imperial, and I couldn't drill them out because that would have spoiled the through hole plating. So. I got rid of that and uh, got another one, which is okay. And uh, then I've populated one of these, and uh, of course it doesn't work. So <laughs> now I've got to find out why it's not working. <sighs> I'm having a bad day today. I wasted the whole morning expended at least forty pounds, possibly fifty pounds, and achieved absolutely nothing. So I've got these Teensy 3.2s which are Arduino equivalents, one of which is used in, to control the rudder servo. So this one was in my new PC board, but it didn't work, and I don't know why but I eventually discovered that this was not working. So I unsoldered it. And I was going to replace it with this one. But in order to do that, I had to solder on this wire onto the reset pin, which is a very small pin in here. And uh, in the process of doing that, the pad actually came off. So this one is now not usable, except for applications that don't require the reset pin. So I got yet another one, a third one, and I soldered the reset pin onto here satisfactorily. And I was just testing it with the PC when the bloody Nun Revenue emailed me to say I got a message that I should read. So I got up to get my login code for the Nun Revenue, stepped backwards, tripped over the USB cable, and pulled this USB thing off here. So this one is now useless. And I thought, well, I'll unsolder the gold-plated pins at least, but they wouldn't unsolder. Um, without melting the plastic. So I placed an order for five more of these things at a cost of £96 and when they come 
I shall continue with this saga. This is a Max 6369 watchdog timer, which I could only get in a SOT 23 package, which is one of the smallest surface mount packages there is. It's sitting on a first class stamp, and uh, I've got there my sharpest pair of tweezers. Um, so you can see how very small this thing is and I've been trying to solder this in place. So I've been using my normal times three and a half magnification headset but I can't really see it clearly <laughs> on that, or at least not the individual contacts of that. So I've been using this times ten magnifier and uh, I picked up the package in the tweezers and um, dipped it in this um, surface mount um, solder paste. Just dipped it so that all its feet got wet. And then I put it on the thing. And then I applied my hot air gun until the solder had melted. But then I looked at it through the time state magnifier and found that a couple of the contacts didn't appear to be soldered correctly. So then I tried soldering it with this, which has an enormous point can, compared with the size of the thing, even though this is the smallest point I can buy for it. Um, and that simply got too much solder bridging the contacts on that. So then I had to take that off with this braid, solder sucking braid. And then I looked at it again through the time state magnifier, and it seemed to be all right. So I'm hoping for the best. Well, there it is on the board, and I just hope that that is correct. We'll only find out when I put the rest of the circuit in there. Right, well, at last I've got this circuit made up in the PC board in a form that's actually working. So you can see it's pointing in that direction at the moment and um, I can move it round to 180 degrees roughly speaking. So the only thing I haven't done is connected up this watchdog timer which should reboot this, uh, this Teensy Arduino equivalent if it stops kicking the watchdog. So I've got to test that next. Right, so the yellow trace is the Teensy Arduino kicking the watchdog timer to stop it timing out. And the blue trace, or the cyan trace, is the reset line to the Arduino which is currently high meaning it's not resetting. If I get the uh, servo to drive the motor you see that the interval between watchdog kicks changes because the uh, Arduino is busy supervising the motor uh, but they're always less than a second or so the actual watchdog timeout is minimum of 60 seconds or maximum of 300 seconds I think. So what I'm going to do is stop the Arduino from kicking the watchdog and we'll just see uh, how long it goes before it times out. There it goes, and you saw the red uh, LED lighting on the unit, which uh, it only does when it's rebooted, so that proves that the reset worked. So, the whole thing's working. Um, the only thing I've got to do now is somehow get this circuit into this box in such a way that it's not snagging on anything, and the wires aren't snagging on anything, and, it just, and, it, and I can close the box up in a waterproof manner. 
And this is uh, far from uh, obvious that I can do this, because the circuit will just fit upside down here, I think, across here. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fix it in position. And I think that some of these wires are too long, but I've cut them this length so that I could actually get at it. For, um, you know, test purposes. Well, I've shortened the leads and I've fitted the circuit temporarily down there with a bit of blue tack in the only position where it can possibly go. And I'm thinking that um, I can probably just furk all this thing in here. Um, keeping the wires clear of this cog or gear. like that and then do it up well now leave it like that test it see whether it works and then do it up see if it still works and then undo it and see what's going on here um, I probably need to secure these wires a bit better than that perhaps with a bit more blue tack or something it looks just feasible I've also got to, um, before I do that, I've got to plug the USB in and uh, upload the operational circuit, um, which is the same, sorry, the operational software, which is the same as I've got here, minus the test uh, features. Right, well, having put it in here, I'm going to test it. Um, that doesn't look right. Should be seven milliamps. No, that's not working. <coughs> Plus twelve volts on red. PWM on yellow. Ground on green, plus five volts on brown. That's correct. So isn't that typical? So I haven't done anything since I was testing it last, except that I have shortened these leads um, and put it in this box. Now the problem is shortening the leads obviously involved a lot of handling of this board. I had to unsolder those, all these wires, and uh, re-solder them. That should not have caused a problem. This is typical of life in general, isn't it? I can't say I haven't changed anything, because I have actually unsoldered all these wires and re-soldered them, but I've just checked at least the colour coding is correct. The problem is, with these, sol with these sh shorter wires, it's not so easy to put this in a vise and uh, investigate. You may wonder why I don't use a Molex connector, so that I can easily disconnect these things, but I just wanted to avoid using connectors, because um, I thought solder joints would be better. There is a connector here, which I've got to glue up. I can't avoid that, because it comes with the motor. Anyway, it's not working. Oh, well, I think I'm a fully certified moron. Because I've had to re replace this Teensy once already. Um, 
when I put this one in, I didn't solder all 24 or however many pins there are. Yeah, it is 24, I think, pins, or maybe 28. I only soldered the ones that uh, mattered. Or so I thought. But this left-hand one here is the fi plus 5 volt supply to the board, and it's not soldered. So I think that explains why it doesn't work. Right, well, uh, it is working properly now. Which I'm glad, because the whole point of this work is to get something that's reliable. And so if the electronics was flaky, uh, that would be uh, no good at all. So, that's a relief. We'll put it back in its box and see if it works then. Right, so I've put it back in its box now. And we'll see if that works. Right, so now I'm going to screw this down ruthlessly. Maybe something stopping it going right down. Could be a problem. Well, it does sound different, doesn't it? different it means there's something maybe rubbing. I wish this box was 5% bigger but it's uh, the only suitable one I can find. The question is, was anything rubbing? How would I know? So this area here is one that I'd milled down a small amount <clears throat> because I was worried that this is the bit that sticks down lowest down there when I put it in the box. I was worried that this might hit the bottom and I'm thinking that maybe it is on the spindle because there's a very slight darkness there, isn't there? I think what I'll do is put some grease on here and repeat the test and see whether the grease moves. Well, I'll put a little engineer's blue on it. And, and so we'll see if that transfers onto there. Right, so we can see that the blue here has transferred onto there, so this is rubbing down there, which we cannot have. Well, I had already previously tried to address this by milling down the uh, base of the box here a little bit, and by milling this down a bit. But there's a limit to how far I can go in both of those directions because we can't <laughs> it goes right through the box, and I can't make this too thin, or it's not going to secure the gear in place. That is 3.9, where I haven't milled it. 4.1, where there's a little thing standing up, and where I've milled it. It is 3.7. So basically I could mill that down a bit and it would be okay, I could go further. Right, I milled another half millimetre off that. We'll see if that is clear. It is completely clear. 
Good. So that's all right. Well, short of actually fitting it in the boat, that uh, rudder servo is now finished. Um, so I shall move on to other projects. And thanks very much for watching.